Hello everyone. Welcome to Life Talks. Today I have Jolie. She is a founder and a comedian. I will actually let Jolie introduce herself. Nobody can do better than her. Over to you, Jolie. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I created something that's new and that hasn't really been done before. So I produce and host and create comedy shows that people can bring their dogs to that also raise money for animal rescue. That's amazing. So is it like, where do you organize these comedy shows? So they have to be in dog friendly places. So if you think of uh, traditional stand up comedy, you might think of like a, a really dark comedy club like it's in like the basement of a bar or it's yeah. it's, it's just different so we're not in that space <laughs> we're in a space that's bright it's open um, people have dogs walking around they're holding them in their laps um, so dog friendly spaces in new york i'm located in new york and there are um, a handful of dog friendly like coffee shops and cafes so mainly there or like breweries or outdoors Sounds fun. So what is, how is it different? So is it only for people who have dogs or someone else who maybe likes pets, but doesn't have a dog yet can also come in? Is it like comedy for dogs, on dogs or how, how is it? So it's definitely open for all dog lovers. So a lot of people will bring their dogs with them to the show, but in New York, it's so expensive. There are so many, um, rules and regulations for apartments of whether or not you can have pets. Maybe people are allergic, but they still really like it. So if you don't have a dog, it's okay. You can still come. You just cannot be afraid of dogs or like very allergic to dogs because okay. <laughs> there, there are probably around 15 to 20 dogs at every show, at least, at least. So um, it's, it's definitely open to everybody who's a dog lover. We get asked a lot, can I bring my cat to the show? And I'm sorry, you cannot. It would start a fight. <laughs> so please <laughs> yeah. only go home and tell them about the show after. Um, and comedy wise, we have different types of comedians, um, primarily stand up comedy, but sometimes we have musical comedians or people who come and do original comedy characters that they'll perform. Um, it's not only about dogs, but okay. the, the dogs insert themselves in the sets a lot because they're barking, they're running up and going to see the person who like the comedian that's performing. So even though a joke might not originally be about a dog, it could end up being about a dog because they're barking or they're like just being part of the act. Yeah, that sounds like really fun. I've never been to such a place. I love comedies, stand-up comedies. So I'm imagining, trying to imagine, this is more like a lot of interaction, maybe singles with dogs. It's like a great place, you know, you can talk to other people who have dogs or don't have dogs. Like, wow, when are you coming to the Bay Area? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'd love to. We, we would love to. <laughs> we do it primarily in New York right now. But last year, we actually did a show in LA, which not the Bay Area, but still on the West Coast. And hopefully, like we're really trying to get our name out there, our brand, our mission. So more people know who we are outside of New York, because we would love to take it on tour. We'd love to bring it to different cities because um, part of our mission. So we, we have this fun event that we're creating for a community, but a portion of our ticket sales are donated to animal rescue centers. Sometimes animal rescue centers bring dogs that need to be fostered or adopted to the show. So if, if you came without a dog, you might leave with a dog. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, our, part of our mission is also to create space for underrepresented performers. So mm -hmm. our performers are diverse in identity and in talent. Like I said, it's not always just stand up. And we do try to create space for underrepresented performers that might not have as much access to stage time as their peers. So it's it's really interesting and you mentioned this is an innovative idea because that's what the show is about somebody who has done something outside their comfort zone taking risk or doing innovation what motivated you what's your story yeah so i have a background in education and when the pandemic started and, and we were quarantined in new york it was about 
late February, early March of 2020, I started taking online comedy classes like writing, um, sketches, characters, late night style, like pretty much everything that you can do with comedy writing. I took those classes kind of like as a creative outlet during quarantine. And I've always loved comedy, but I was just never in a physical location where I could perform it as much as you could in New York. Mm -hmm. And then quarantine ended in New York about uh, April 2021. So a little over a year later. And mm -hmm. my dog is laying right behind me on the couch. Right there. Oh <laughs> I was just sleeping. And um, I had adopted her before the pandemic. So she wasn't a pandemic puppy. But every time I started to leave the house now to go to open mics or to go to comedy shows, because we can do that in person, she was really sad. She, she was sad. She was like, wait, where are you going? We've you know, you, you haven't left this apartment without me in over a year. Mm -hmm. um, and we also had friends who adopted during the pandemic and they got their first dog and their dog had so much separation anxiety when they tried to leave the apartment that they're like, well, we literally cannot leave because mm -hmm. they're going to tear the apartment up. They're going to rip up the couch wow. cushions, or, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to, they're going to rip it up. So my, my partner and I were like, okay, what if, we create a, a comedy show. So comedians and uh, people who like comedy in a space where they can bring their dogs with them because it's something that we want to do, something that our friends want to do. And we kind of saw this as a need right at that time, mm -hmm. right? Because people were just coming out of quarantine and, and wanting to connect again. So I think it was really identifying that and looking at that time of, I think, let, like, let's try it now. Let's see how it goes. Awesome. So yeah, the theme today, as we discussed earlier, it's more around going out of your comfort zone and trying it, like just doing it and then you never know. Now you're saying it's like really taking up. So what is like one or a couple of lessons that you want to share with our listeners to encourage anyone to get out of their comfort zone and really try it and believe in what they are thinking? And maybe yeah. any challenges or any mind, like any obstacles in the mind that we have, any learnings from your own journey? Yeah, so I think like two big things come to mind and maybe they're kind of revolving around like the same point. So even when I, when we started the show and when we had the idea for must love dogs and comedy to begin with, it was kind of like a lot of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like, will people even like this? Is it silly? Mm -hmm. Is it stupid? Is it like too cutesy? And then especially me, like I have a, a background in education and I'm newer to comedy. I haven't been doing it a long time. What do I know about running a business? <laughs> I, I didn't go to school for that. I don't have any of these like certifications and stuff. So a lot of imposter syndrome of like feeling like I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And people ask us all the time, what are your long-term goals? And it's like, well, I don't even know, like, we're just trying to make it day by day and like focusing on finding the joy of why we started this in the first place, the positive impact that we're making on the communities that we're a part of and just really sticking to our mission. Cause there are a lot of times that we question it, right? Like in the comedy world, uh, is this too like just cute of an idea is it like really a good show or or people just think it's kind of silly and kind of second guessing that and, and getting in your head because of that imposter syndrome and really trying to, like not to compare yourselves to others but doing so in the process so I think just really kind of sticking to your your mission and vision and why you wanted to do this in the first place to kind of ground yourself when those feelings of imposter syndrome come through or when you see yourself starting to compare yourself to other people in your industry or in your new venture whatever it is that you might be trying awesome I like that and that's like my topic of podcast to find joy in what you are doing and sometimes it needs a radical change action so mm -hmm. now like any looking back going to your previous profession or this is like you mentioned, it's like day by day, but where are you now? Yeah, so um, we are currently in the process of changing it to a nonprofit. So we, we started as an LLC, but like our mission and vision and none of that is changing. It's just, I think we're going to change um, to be a nonprofit so we can open the door for like some larger uh, partnerships with companies and organizations and be able to raise more money for Animal Rescue. Um, looking back... Would I go back to my old, uh, my old career? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. I'm I'm really passionate about being in this entertainment space, and I think like the drive that I had for education 
was to really be there, create space for people to share their stories and their experiences and connect with others. And I was doing that in an educational space, but I see myself still doing that same mission just in something that feels more fulfilling to me. Who is most happiest, your dog? <laughs> <laughs> she's she's very low key. Yeah, I think she's, she's, she's the driver she's, for she's this. Sleeping. <laughs> she's the um the chief barking officer. She's CBO. Okay, so on that note, any fun? A bit since you're a comedian, any anything to like any fun joke big that came up in that you remember that came up in the stand up comedy with all the dogs barking and comedians doing improv in real time. Oh my gosh, there's it's just like as a comedian who doesn't do necessarily improv like stand up comedy like you, you write jokes you practice it you go to open mics and it's like it's very structured typically when you're performing but all of that goes out the window <laughs> when you perform at one of our shows because we've had uh, a comedian standing up there doing their jokes very seriously and a dog came and just pooped right in front of the comedian <laughs> we've had uh, a dog get really excited and get like a zo like zoomies and get a lot of energy and they ran and like pulled the cord out of the microphone or just dogs really wanting to participate like uh we had a musical comedian perform an original song and they sang a really really long note and then there was a brief pause and then a dog started singing too, like howling along. So <laughs> it's just know. they have to. They do. It's just perfect timing. Like I, I think it's like oh haha, ha, you know, like comedy. This is really funny. And then it's like that extra level of oh my gosh, that's uh, it's it's definitely you, no show is ever the same. I think that's what's really cool. Like even if you book other comedians and and things like that, like we always have new comedians, but there's always different dogs in there, different. Um, people being in there so I think it's just a very unique experience like it's never the same I feel like you should have an online version for people like me to see it from the other part of the coast <laughs> it yeah, be funny. yeah. I'm, you know I'm not there but yeah I think it sounds fun as you're describing any any challenges that you see because generally when I see dogs like new dogs they don't know each other or any other business model challenges that you have seen because you said that this was not your background anything that you have evolved and uh, like that has helped you evolve as a person and in conducting this business as you're the founder of this now yeah so it, um our dog friendly spaces that we have our shows in they're open to friendly dogs like dogs that are friendly with other dogs and dogs that are friendly with other humans so if you have a, a pet or a, a dog specifically that is a little a bit more rambunctious and doesn't always get along with the other dogs and you might have to leave them at home um no. so we we do have I think I think we do a good job and then the venues that we're a part of we do a really good job to like monitor everything and if we keep the dogs on the leash during the show and then they have a a short intermission playtime off leash when they can play a little bit so being on the leash there's a little bit more control um to be able to like separate dogs and, and make sure nothing else happens um but business wise <laughs> I mean challenges it's just not knowing what like you don't know what you don't know right it's like when we started the business and when, when we started the idea for the show to begin with it was like oh let's just try it and see how it goes mm -hmm. and then it went well and people were really into it and they were you know a following us and it, it's just grown and grown so like if you would have told us our first show was October 2021 if you would have told us that a year later in October 2022 that we'd be partnering with the daily show on Comedy Central and, and like doing these bigger partnerships I would have laughed in your face and said that's crazy um so I think just knowing how to navigate like structures and and set up things that are a little bit more structured and, and like policies and procedures because we started this completely from scratch and and our idea of that and then trying to pitch it to other people because we're in like this very weird niche of being for animal lovers being for comedy lovers and having that like very small niche so kind of explaining who we are what we do and why we do what we do is 
uh, a little confusing to people sometimes. But I personally think, you know, as we develop products, if you identify a particular niche, the audience, then it's always better. Your chances of success are like 10x, 100x more rather than catering a service to everyone. And I think that's the that's the secret sauce here, right? That you identify mm-hmm. that you are in a good geography where there are a lot of dog lovers and comedy lovers and maybe if they're not comedy lovers they like it's like finding ideas to go hang out and people can actually enjoy oh this is something I didn't know I couldn't go for comedy maybe for xyz different reasons and mm-hmm. now I can go with my family and dog and you know all that yeah exactly yeah and, and uh, that's true it's it's getting a different audience you know than the comedy clubs are getting so we also try to make it equitable for our audiences um to come to our shows. So the majority of them are kind of like a pay what you can model. Whereas if you go to a comedy club in New York specifically, there's a ticket price that ranges from five, ten dollars up to like 40, 50, 60 dollars. And then you have to go in there, you have to get two drinks, you have to order a minimum amount of food. So it becomes pricey to enjoy this art form. Um in a traditional space. So we try to make that more accessible. And then people say, hey, I, I know I can pay what I can to get in. And then a portion of that is going to be donated to a cause that I support and am, you know, a, a, an advocate of because I'm here and I, I love dogs. Yeah, I really like, uh, I'm sure this whole charity thing would have come little like as you were doing and the business was scaling, you got it. And I, I yeah, that's really awesome. Anything else you would like to share? I really, really enjoyed. This is such a different, like, kind of, um, I would say, venture that I've heard. <laughs> totally, like, really creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's something that, yeah, people are like, at first you, you hear, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's definitely, we, we categorize ourselves and uh, we're, we're chaotic joy Um, because it is a little crazy in there sometimes but yeah we've been called the happiest place in NYC so it's it's definitely a place to 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 go and and disconnect from you know everything going on in the world and just be present with your dog be present with your friends um, and just leave a little bit happier than when you came in I love that please please have an online version hopefully (laughs) would be able to tune in sooner <laughs> yeah we we're on instagram uh at muscle of dogs and comedy and we are trying so we we're a two-person team uh so it's myself and then my partner who's not here right now but well i guess two two person one pup team um so we're we're trying to grow it and and scale it and make it more accessible for individuals because we post a lot of clips on um instagram and excuse me some on tiktok but it's still like would be cool to put longer form content so people can see uh, the show if if they want to be connected to it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing your journey, Jolie. So this is like something my takeaway is that this you had not seen this. This was just out of a need. And then you discussed with friends, like how any startup really starts that you really identify a problem. Then you're like, okay, is it only me? Are other people also seeing the same? And then are people willing to pay for it? Would they really encourage something like that? And then you didn't think too much. You just like, let's try, right? And oh, yeah. I did, we did not think <laughs> think through the, at the beginning. It's just like, let's just do it. Come on, let, let, let's just do it. And then just grow it slowly over the course of uh, starting from April 2021 to now. Awesome. Wow. It's like, it sounds like a fun two years journey and wish you all the best for future. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. Um, We always say, get ready to laugh and sniff each other's butts. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me.